and reason 6,895 of why Pokemon's great no matter what people say. Oh, we started? Oh, okay. Um. So as you just saw, um, I went through the trouble of getting uh, Necrozma. Uh, I was thinking maybe you would have to go through all of the... Whatever they're called? The Ultra Beast. Yeah, I thought that. Yeah. I was thinking that. You didn't have to. I only had to fight like six somethings. Oh, did you get the Poi Pal? Poi Pole. Poi Pole. And it was Necrozma. We got our. No, I don't move it. Oh, you didn't catch six Ultra Beasts. No. Um, I only went. I did the Dynamax Adventure six times. Technically seven times, but I lost. But I lost once. But we don't talk about that one. <laughs> I've lost plenty of times. Doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, uh, Necrozma was the the big nasty legendary of Sun and Moon. Mm-hmm. Kind of. It's kind of one of those ones that makes me really wonder. It's like, are you sure you guys keep saying that these Pokemon are like not naturally evil? Because this guy came off pretty evil in the whole thing. She's so excited. I ran up to her and she smiled. She's all right. I feel like even when I paired up with her in the Dynamax adventure, she had a relatively smart AI. Well, well the reason I asked if you got uh, the Ultra Beast, if like five Ultra Beast, is because uh, a Poi Pal just appears in here after you catch five of them. Oh. No, the only other Ultra Beasts I got other than Square Boy was Kartana. And... I got a shiny of that Kartana. Pheromosa. Fer Pheromosa. So you only got three. So if you get... If you gotten two more, you would have gotten a Poi Pole. It just... So it, once you... Well, well, real quick, it would have just been right next to that little... The, the readout place right there and you would have walked up to it and then the scientists would have gone like oh yeah it just showed up out of nowhere and so we just went like hey why don't, why don't you just stick around for a bit and then they were like hey why don't you have a trainer take you and you're like fuck yeah I'll take this boy pole uh, so once you catch it no there's no special fanfare nothing fancy happens but once you catch it and then talk to Peony <laughs> You give me the hint, and off I go. You sure you want to look at this thing? It's liable to destroy the cave we're in. And probably more. It's weird that Necrozma is not considered an Ultra Beast, even though it comes from the alternate dimension. Well, what is the definition of an Ultra Beast? An Ultra Beast is a Pokemon from a different dimension. Either that, okay, I don't know. Got me. Either that, or it's just from our dimension because it's the original Pokemon. Because it 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 gets weird. It confused with Soul Lego or Lenola, Lunola. We did it. Um, Is that her base camp? Yeah. I'm going to be honest, I don't believe he does. See? I like that she just brushes it off. Like, oh yeah, by the way, you caught Necrozma. That's cool. Even though technically there's only one, but we're letting it slide because you probably didn't play the other games. It's also, like, alternate like, dimension. You know maybe. Necrozma, ever responsible for so much of the crap that happened in the Sun and Moon. All of that going on. It's like, you just caught it. Okay, cool. I especially love how... S maybe, this, maybe this is like a mini Necrozma. I especially the real one just kind of sent out a little a little scout kid. I especially love the way old. Oh, and you get an ability patch for this. Yeah. 
how the uh, which is kind of your reward for doing the thing. Yeah, it gets changed the Pokemon to a uh, hidden ability. And a Beast Ball, which you can use, which was used to catch the Ultra Beast, but has such a piss poor capture rate for normal Pokemon. It's really only meant for Ultra Beast. Oh, so the thing with the ability sticker or whatever the heck it was. Ah, Alunala. What do you have? Um, the thing with that one is it will give your Pokemon the it its hidden ability if it has one. But somebody in the comments, I think, pointed out that if you do that, it is now impossible to get it back to one of its other two abilities. So... You use wisely, basically. Yeah. No. Only use it if you really want that. Before you continue the button pressing here, I was going to say, I like the... Um, I like what they did in Ultra Sun and Moon in comparison to Sun and Moon. Because, like, Sun and Moon had, like, you fought against Crazy Mom fused with a jellyfish Ultra Beast at the end there. They just went, like, through a wormhole and they're just stuck there and you fought them off. I like the way Ultra Sun and Moon kind of played it up as that whole thing was going to happen and the Crowsman went like, Nope! My turn! And just, like, spits them out of the hole. <laughs> and then just, like, fuses with the legendary beast you have. It, like, cracks me up that that's what happened. <laughs> it's like you would have loved it if you'd seen it. It's just like, Oh no, we're playing the exact same points and everything. And then the Crowsman's like, Nope! My turn to be evil. <laughs> Uh, sorry to say, my adventure is pretty much done. So that's the end of the legendary clues. As, so that's that. There's a, still a little bit more that we can do, though. It's kind of why I'm really hoping against hope that they're going to like somehow bring around another DLC at some point. Um, there are potentially three things left that we can do. And the first one that I'm going to do is down here. Okay, I have to go here. I keep thinking I can go to the ones just with the squares. Okay, so I don't remember where it was, but there was a... signboard or something. Oh, down to your left. You gotta go down. Of course not. Yeah. Why would there be a path over here? Why would there be indeed? I see it. I see the path. Yeah, there is a signboard somewhere oh, that says... To the left and to the back. Back and to the left. Ugh. Oh, I just... Oh, yeah, I was back here. I remember this. Was it this? Nope, nope. Over. It's in the little cove next to it. There we go. Ugh. I'm glad I hit the button in time. I sneezed so hard I had to take a drink because something came loose. Alright, so spread my voice. That's the clue you get. It is not a helpful clue, but it is the clue that you get. So what you do from here is hit the wrong button, and then you hit the wrong button again, and then you connect to the internet. And you wait for it to connect. Ugh, I sneeze. And then you start seeing people show up. And what you do is you run and you talk to people. Yep. Gotta talk to a bunch of people. Oh man, a loaf of bread. They always give you some special item here and there. Oh, well, that's what you use for, like, other food items and stuff. Okay, you have to talk to, like, 25 people or so, so see you in a minute. Okay, I swear I talked to at least 25 people, but and I was waiting for some kind of notification, and I never got one. But if you come back after you fight 25-odd people, Spiritome's here. Well, fight, you say talk. Yeah, ah, crap, I wanted to read the thing. Spiritome. This was my favorite Pokemon Gen 4. Mostly. It's a pretty cool looking Pokemon. Well, mostly, I'm not gonna lie. Mostly up until Gen. 
Oh, I yeah. should have changed my leader. Gen 6, it was basically like... You said it's Ghost Dark? Yeah, Ghost Dark. It's literally only weak to Fairy. Everything else, it's like yeah. resistant or... It... Yeah, this is this is kind of my worst typing for... Oh, it's hailing, too! Hmm. Sucks to be I you. hate my life. <laughs> this game sucks. <laughs> okay, so power 40, power 40, power 80. Which one of these? This one always goes first. I get stab. Oh, I also... That also increases damage because it's power under... Yeah, because tactician. 60. So this one is higher... Man, Sizor is just going to friggin' murder something. I gotta swap out. What level is this thing? 72. Um, Butterfree, what do you got? Why did I make good Pokemon? You know what? Real quick, before you do anything, like switching out a Pokemon, just throw a Quick Ball at it, because it's turn one. Okay. Quick ball. Oh, I have one. Well, you only need one. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work from here on out. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Ogre, for completely undercutting all of his str strategizing. You're welcome, viewers! I Solve that problem! I aim to please. <laughs> God. All this strategizing. What should I use? Throw a Pokeball at it that's qu that works better on first turn. Okay. I caught it. You know what this exactly reminds me of? Oh, yeah. So after you talk to everybody, it says my voice has been heard and a spirit. Oh, hi. And a spirit home shows up. Which is cool because then you can catch it. I don't think you can get a spirit home anywhere else in the game. Nope. That's like the only place. I don't think you can get multiple either, breeding aside. Well, yeah, you can breed, but other than that... How do you kinda... breed dead Pokemon? Uh, ditto. They're dead. Uh, they have eggs, so ditto. They don't even have physical bodies. Listen, Haunter and Gengar can breed, so... And as as is very clear... Should be very clear... Gigantamax Gengar is nothing but raw sexual energy, so... I knew you were going there! And yet... The second you said, especially Gengar, I know it. Well, yeah, you should have seen it coming. Just like everyone else. Okay, so they'll still hang around because they're not going to unload immediately. But there we go. We did the thing. We did Spiritome. There are one or two things, dog. God dang it. All right, so I said there are one or two things left to show off, and there are a ton of little Easter eggs around the island. I think you can even run into a couple characters here. The one we were trying to get to show up is you can find Oleana walking around out here, but... I think it's random if she shows up or not, and who knows how long that's going to take us, so I'm not going to worry about it. And it's only at night, so... Yeah. Only at night, and then you have to talk to Paeania a whole bunch in order to get a hint about it. But I, the reason I wanted to show that one off is I think that's how you get Paeania's, um rare card. No, we should already have it. His rare one? Yeah. Check your... I know you got his. he gave us his normal one, but I think that's how you get his rare one. Well, well check your inventory, because I swear you have one, like, after you complete all the legendary stuff. No, he never gave me that. Well, double check, just in case. Album. Oh, yeah, we do have two. And we never actually looked at these, so... Steel type. Is there a current steel type, Jim? If it is, it's probably minor league. Hmm. I like how it says he has many fans, especially among men. <laughs>
and we see here that, as I think we kind of semi-spoiled before, Peony is Rose's younger brother. We? Everybody knew that in the moment they saw him. I didn't. I don't know what it was. He didn't catch me as... He didn't strike me as that. I didn't see it. Though the story's kind of sad between the two, is that the fact that he became the champion, but Rose became the league chairman, but he didn't like having to deal with Rose constantly, like, trying to micromanage him, so he just quit one day. You can actually rematch Peony down in the Dynamax layer, and he has a new team as well. Hmm. Look at that, and the little Peonia. Yep, and his wife back there, too. This is probably some time after he became champion, or was close to it. Okay, so, anyway. Um, I was going to show that off, but... It's being a butt, and I'm not that worried about it. So the other thing, the last thing, is this right here. I hit the wrong button. So most of the Dynamax dens you see are lit up. This one's grayed out, even though I haven't touched this one. In fact, you can't even put a piece into it, the den. It just says there doesn't seem to be anything in it. So what you do here... Well, I mean, if you back out real quick. Just just real quick, for my sake. Look at the stones surrounding it. Something special there happening, huh? I mean, maybe. If it has any significance other than being four stones in a square, I was really, it's lost on me. I was really hoping it would be five... As in kind of a wink, wink, nod, nod. You need, like, five Pokemon for this. Mm. Well, you see there's a broken one here. <gasps> Maybe there's a reason for that. Yeah. Anyway. So what do you do here? Is I'm going to swap you and you. And then you have to have all five Reggies. Including the one that you can't get, or that you didn't choose. Which means we need Drago, Rock, Ice, Steel, and Ogre has contributed his Aleki for the cause. And now with all five of these handy. Just throw in a wishing piece. No. Yep, yep, there we go. It lights up, and I'm going to save. You're all alone against Reggie Gigas. A level oh, that thing is angry. <laughs> A level 100 Reggie Gigas. Yeah, level 100. This thing is not hacking around. The um what you have going for you is it has slow start. Which, for the Which means you have five turns before it starts destroying you. Essentially what it does is that for the first five turns, all of its legendary stats are cut in half. It is very strong, but the first five turns, it takes a while. Once those five turns disappear, it starts destroying. Because now it's a fully it's a fully online legendary Pokemon. Who I'll remind you. In the mythology, is responsible for putting the continents together in the Pokemon world. And I so it's a normal type compared to all of the others, which have a non-normal type. And being normal, it's weak to fighting. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have a stronger 
physical or special defense, so you can just hit it straight up with whatever fighting attack you have. Okay, that hurt a little. That was surprising. Yeah, and it's not that's even fine. going yet. So I'm gonna get out my three max knuckles. Since these raise your attack, three may be enough. Okay, looking good. Please take it out, or things are gonna go south fast. Hey! So it was level 100. Yeah, I'm gonna catch it. <laughs> so it was level 100, but as usual, um, going in with your correct typing and a strategy is still gonna do you well. And if you can knock it out in those first five turns, then you are golden. Why Reggie Gygus is here, I have no idea. I feel like there's just a whole lot of kind of non-canon stuff in the Crown Tundra. Mm. A lot of, you know, just don't worry about it. And it is forever shut off. And there we go. Let's grab you. a jolly type too. How you doing, big guy? I'll let that that uh, stature fool you. And I think in canon he's like twelve feet or something. I don't think there's a Pokedex entry for him. There is not. Let me double check. There's not in the Crown Tun in the Crown Tundra. If they ever feel like releasing the national decks, <laughs> cough, cough, wink, wink, new L DLC. Honestly, oh, he's he's probably about ten feet tall. Reggie Gigas is twelve foot two. You know, honestly, I'd believe that. I wonder what the tallest Pokemon is. Like, how tall am I? Four or five feet? Oh, it's Eternius. Eternius is the tallest Pokemon at sixty-five feet and seven inches. It used to be Wailord, and then Eternius came out and ate its lunch, so. How big's Necrozma? Oh, you're a tiny guy. Necrozma? It is. 7 foot 10. But if it. 7 foot. Um. Yeah. Huh, what? Oh, there you are. I mean, it's not the scale, obviously, but... I think the smaller ones are to scale, but his friggin' hand in the sky form is huge. Yeah, uh, let's see. Dusk and main, main Necrozma is 12 foot 6. On... Like, I think on... F I think on field, all Pokemon are technically to scale. Dawn Wings Necrozma is 13 feet, 9 inches, and then Ultra Necrozma, which you can't get, is 24 feet, 7 inches. You look tall. How tall are you? Oh, you're tiny. Yes. You're like people-sized. It's also known as the other Step On Me Mommy Pokemon. Do not look at me. It is all the weird... This one looks lady. tiny just looking at it, so I'm not even going to bother looking. What was another one? It's Comfey, really? That small? Wow. Uh, the smallest Pokemon out there are all four inches tall. Which is Joltik, Flabebe, Cutie Fly, Comfey, Cosmoem, and Sinesti. Well. If they're not to scale, then, like, they put some effort into it, at least. Because they can't be unwieldy. I mean, yeah, like I said, Necrozma's 65 feet. I'm pretty sure that, uh... 
that would probably lag out the hell of a game to render a 65 foot Pokemon. Hey! How you doing? Pretty good, just wanna absorb all your blood. Oh. Alright, well, let's put our team back together. That's effectively it for um, Crown Tundra. Um, that I know of, I can't think of anything else to... show off. Mm. No, don't swap it, just put it in there. Uh, you were cool. You can go there. And I suppose at the end of the day, this is, um... Well, final thoughts. Because this is the end of Crown Tundra, which means... Unless we can... Unless they come out with, like, a surprise... I'm Unless they come out with a surprise expansion or whatever, this is... I'm kind of hoping they do at some point. It kind of seems like it seems like they're not, because I don't know if they've got anything more to say for it, but it would be nice to at least, like, I don't know, see a... See something for, like, the national decks and whatnot. Like, it doesn't have to be perfectly in here, it'd just be nice to be able to have access to all the Pokémon. And at this point, we've got a lot of them! We're not missing too many. I mean, we're still missing Miss Magius. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and... So, final thoughts on Pokémon on Pokemon Sword and Shield as a whole, because it doesn't seem like there's going to be much more after this. Uh, personally, I act I genuinely enjoyed playing these games. I legitimately did. And they've gotten... They got an amount of flack, but honestly, I feel like the... I've heard less and less of people giving them flack as time has gone on. So I kind of feel like... I almost feel like a lot of the... A lot of the flack that they got early on was people who thought the game was going to be different than it was and were upset that it wasn't what they wanted it to be. Um, which is often misconstrued as, like, people have a hard time differentiating between this isn't what I want it to be and this is bad. Not to say that the game doesn't have its flaws, but which we've for sure pointed out over the way, but I feel like at this point people have kind of gotten used to what the game is and what the game um, is going to be, and people are just playing it and having a good time. Anymore, I genuinely, I really only hear people just laughing it up and having a good time playing the game. And if it says anything... I've super enjoyed my time with this game. I haven't played a Pokemon game in a while, but this game did something that no other Pokemon game has done up until now, which is it makes me want to play more Pokemon. It makes me want to play the next Pokemon. I had all but written Pokemon off as, like, it's just not something that I'm super interested in. But now that we're at the end of this one, I want the next game to come out because I want to play it. And I... I think that's an accomplishment. But... Unless you've got anything to say? Oh, um... Crown Tundra. Thoughts on Crown Tundra, I guess, because that's kind of the thing that we just got done going through. Me specifically? I like Crown Tundra. I... I said of Isle of Armor that Isle of Armor should have been, like, at release. Just because it felt more like a post-game thing to do for Isle of Armor, uh, for Pokemon Sword and Shield in general. 
Mm-hmm. But Ca- Crown Tundra feels like its own area because it's a much bigger wild area and it feels more thematically correct in the mm. sense because you notice that even though most of the area is not snow covered, it still maintains a snowy disposition most of the time. Like there is a lot of hail in this areas weather wise. Mm. Like I have never seen a sandstorm or a heat wave down here. I may have seen a heat wave down here, but most of the time it really just feels like yeah this is something they could do from now on and the cave system feels a lot better oh the caves were real nice uh let's see the legendary pokemon were were nice i especially love the fact that they made regional forms for legendaries which is kind of like a granted i'm also on the idea that i love regional forms and i hope they keep doing them forever because why not they're cool. I like regional forms. Mm, yeah, but... Uh, Just being told that, like, hey, this is... The, you know that Pokemon you know and love? You get to see it again, but not. But, um... Uh, Just the idea of a friggin' Diglett showing up. With friggin' long, flowing locks. Yeah. I mean, I know that was Sun and Moon, but, like, just the idea of, like, that's friggin' Diglett. That's great. But, uh... Yeah, no, I mostly like it. The uh, The Dynamax raids are fun. Yeah, it's kind of 50-50 if you should uh, use NPCs or, like, actual people. Yeah, but... I found for Dynamax Adventure, I had a lot of luck with the NPCs. But for the regular raids, just to get around the level cap issue, I would maybe suggest real people. I still did it with NPCs, but... Yeah, but, uh, let's see. Wasn't really that excited about the amount of Pokemon they released this time around, mostly because it was mostly legendaries, and that's kind of like, Mm. eh. But, you know, other than that, it's been quite nice. I hope, I hope at some point they just release, like, they just low-key release a DLC patch that's just like, and here's all the rest of the Pokemon. (laughs) I mean, I think I'm like... I think I'm reaching on it, but at the same time, I kind of really hope they do. Because at, at some point, it's just going to be like, yeah, let's just do it anyway. But I've been, yeah, I've... I've been wrong before, and I'll be wrong again, so... <laughs> yeah, I feel like, I feel like for me, um, especially with Crown Tundra, I was less pleased with Crown Tundra, but I know a lot of people who were, and I understand that The reason I was less pleased with Crown Tundra is mostly because the content offered isn't my kind of content. Um, Isle of Armor gave a little bit more of what I was looking for, which I want not only to explore a new area and run around and do that, but I want some cool uh, plot. I want to go on an adventure. I want to run my character around on an adventure and get involved with what's going on. And Crown Tundra didn't really do that. Crown Tundra was all about catching legendaries. There was hardly a plot here. It was really just, go have fun, there's a bunch of legendaries to catch. And some people really liked the return to form of catching Pokemon in a traditional way. People really like legendaries. So a a lot of people, even in the comments to the videos, ate this thing up and this content was made for them and I actually kind of like that they did Crown Tundra and Isle of Armor different in that regard because it gave something for each crown if they just did Isle of Armor again then you'd feel that but instead it's something different they did something different and I can appreciate that even if it maybe wasn't necessarily for me because I could not care less about legendary Pokemon, and I do not enjoy catching Pokemon traditionally. Which is why I praised the Dynamax Dens before. I did 90% of my Pokemon catching in Dynamax Dens, because I hate catching Pokemon traditionally. The only ones I caught traditionally were the ones that I like got specifically for my party. But... With that said, uh, I suppose as a quick summary, 
Crown Tundra wasn't necessarily for me, but I can absolutely appreciate what they did with it and what they put in. And it'd be nice if they dropped in, like, here's a bunch more. Here's the rest of the Pokemon, so you can go get them. I don't know where in the world you'd catch them. But it'd be neat, it'd be neat if they did that, but I feel like more than anything, I want to go on another adventure. I want to run my character and her party. I want to... I want to have Tofu go on another adventure with her little group of Pokemon. And that's going to be the hardest thing to do. But we saw in the kind of the post-game story before the DLC that you can do that without even opening up a new area. And maybe they could do something like that, that find a way to introduce new Pokemon or something. I don't know. At this point, it's the game has been out for... Nearly a year. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, as of this recording session, not when this video is released, but as of this recording session, Pokemon Sword and Shield has been out for a year, officially. It has been... Yeah, it's been out for out. a year, and Pokemon works on an of what has been fairly strict three-year release cycle. And they did the DLC as opposed to the third game. And given what we got out of the DLC, I absolutely think it was worth the money, and I think it was a very good way to handle or to do this instead of releasing the third game. Because honestly, I don't want to play through the game or the whole game a second time, just to have some minor differences and add some different things in post-game or whatever along the way. Like, I have my character, I have my team, I have what I'm invested in. Give me some new crap, and they did. And I, I like this. I would like them to continue doing it this way instead of a third game. But given that we're get, we've gotten this instead of a third game, we don't have that to look forward to now. And at this point, we've got two years before the next mainline game is released if they continue on the three-year schedule. And with two years down the road... They've got their work ahead of them. And that's part of the reason that some of this game seemed rushed on release as well. Was they were given the same three-year timeline that they had for every other Pokemon game they've ever made. But hey, at this point, they've got their foot in the door. And I hope the next game that comes out is still on the Switch. Or whatever Nintendo console comes after the Switch. I don't know what Nintendo's doing. Uh, I think Nintendo's sticking with the Switch for a while, so I think it's definitely going to be the Switch. I think I saw that there were reports of them working on not a new, not a new system, but like an, a beefed-up Switch. Oh yeah, th those rumors have been going around for a while. I, th I think the point is that there is one that's going to be coming out next year, but a lot of the news for it got pushed back because you know Backstreet was back out of nowhere. Yeah. But anyway, this has been Pokemon Sword and Shield. We finished up the Crown Tundra. If they make anything else, we'll be for sure to show it off. But otherwise, I think this is the end of the game. So until next time, everyone. Don't be sad that it's over. Be happy that it happened. <laughs>